to Grace Episcopal Church, and good morning. morning. Our worship begins in the order of service. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second commandment is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. Good morning, Grace. What a gift to see so many people in person again. Our first lesson this morning is from the 20th chapter of Exodus. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 19. Let's say that uh, alternating verses. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. By 
By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound, and innocent of a great offense. The words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Our epistle this morning is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, a portion of the first chapter. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has God not made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since, in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to Jesus, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Today's Lent word in our Lenten season preaching, teaching Lent word series is the word shout. I know just in case you are wondering, I didn't find this word in Holy Scripture today. I actually found it in my day planner, of all places. My day planner has daily pages, and on each page there's a quotation for every single day of the week, and I don't always read them. They are what I like to call aggressively inspirational. They're not really about making you feel good. They're more about getting stuff done. But a while back, I noticed one quotation, and it has stayed with me ever since. Important things whisper, urgent things shout. Important things whisper, urgent things shout. I think we can all agree, we all know that urgent things shout. I remember having lunch with a much more experienced priest when I was newly ordained. This man worked for the bishop in our huge urban diocese. 
He always seemed calm and available. He had great email response time. I thought he must have had it all together. But when I asked him over lunch, what is it like to lead a diocese? What is it like to establish a vision, to set tone for so many churches? He let his smile drop. He put down his sandwich. He shook his head back and forth. And he said, we don't focus on tone. We don't spend any time on vision. We spend all our time putting out fires. Several years after that lunch, I had my own little collection of dumpster fires happily burning away when I finally decided that Josh and the boys and possibly my inbox would be okay if I accepted the opportunity to go on a vocational retreat. And on that retreat, for the first time in so many years, I had enough days away from everything that seemed so urgent, enough days away from the shouts to hear what the whispers were saying, to hear the important things that God the Holy Spirit was speaking quietly into my heart. Unlike shouts, my whispers didn't show up as pressures or panic or worst case scenarios or calendar blocks or to-do lists. The whispers showed up as feelings and as memories that I had to pay attention to. They showed up as daydreams and excitement about things I possibly wanted to do. They showed up as clear gut sensations about what I value most and about changes I wanted to make in my prayer life, my family life, my money, my health. All week long on that retreat, the important things whispered to me. And yet, if I had not gone away, or even if I couldn't go away, if I hadn't taken care in some way intentionally to listen to what the whispers were saying, any one of those important things, spirituality, family, money, health, eventually would have had to shout. Some urgent things are minor things or even empty things that just yell away for our attention. But other urgent things are truly important things that get ignored for too long. There is no simple line between the two. Doctors see it all the time, right? We ignore a tiny pain. We skip a refill or a physical. We say, tomorrow I will stop eating Doritos for breakfast. And pretty soon, all those little body whispers become a full-blown medical shout. I know a woman who has a five-year rule. Every now and then, she kind of takes stock of her life and says, can I still be doing X, Y, or Z in five years and not experience negative consequences? Do I still want to be zoning out on my phone? Do I still want to be missing dinner with my family? Can I still be holding on to this old resentment? Can I still afford to put off that tough conversation? All of those five-year questions point to whispers in the heart. Right now, the Holy Spirit is whispering to each one of us about things like that in our own lives, saying, here's something you want to pay attention to. Here is a place where something new can possibly happen. When we pay attention to the whispers with God's help, we do the hard work of transformation. When we ignore what the whispers are saying, the whispers turn into shouts. So I mentioned that shout is not part of our scripture, not part of any of our readings today. And in one sense, that's true. In John chapter 2, in English at least, Jesus tells and answers and speaks. But make no mistake, 
Our translation is not fooling any one of us. When Jesus showed up in the Jerusalem temple that day, Jesus was ready to shout. In fact, you could say that regardless of how Jesus uses his voice, Jesus himself is the shout. Jesus is God's shout to the world. Jesus is the shout made flesh. His life, if you think about it, began as a whisper, a baby in a manger on a silent night, the most important word God ever spoke into the universe. And then Jesus grew. He grew louder and louder in truth and in conviction and in the urgency of his message until his life and his ministry became a full-blown shout an urgent proclamation from God. But what was Jesus shouting about? What had God been whispering to us for so long that nobody wanted to hear or that nobody stopped to hear? Two Sundays ago, I shared a picture of Joshua and Jem, my sons, when they were little boys running away from me on a busy sidewalk. It was just a picture of the back of their heads. We were talking about the word repent and how repent means stop, turn around, turn back, turn to God, change your mind, change your heart. When the boys would run away from us back then, a lot of times they would stop and turn around and turn back and run back to us all on their own without us saying anything, but sometimes they didn't. Sometimes their dad and I would have to shout at the top of our lungs, stop, turn around, turn back. Usually in the season of Lent, we would begin Holy Eucharist by kneeling all together and reciting the Ten Commandments. It is no mistake that we recite these commandments in Lent, in this season when God calls us to stop, to turn around, to turn back. It's no mistake that these commandments show up as our first reading today. The same day Jesus shouts in the temple, stop, turn around, turn back to God. These commandments started off as God's whispers, as 10 important things God whispered long ago so that we would have a picture of what human life and community looks like when it is healthy and holy and free. What life looks like when we pay attention to what matters most, when we make room in our lives for God's voice. It is no fun to hear God shout. Ask anyone on the street, who is Jesus? And they're gonna say, he is sweet, and he is gentle, and he is nice to everybody. Not, he messed up the temple with an Indiana Jones whip while he was shouting at everybody about God. There are so many urgent seeming things all around us that shout louder than the whispers of God. And when God does shout, there are so many things that dare to shout right back at him. What is the cross, after all, if it isn't the world shouting back at God? What is the cross if it isn't the world trying to drown out the voice of God? But what is the church? Who are we? If we are not the people who have committed our lives to listening for the whispers of God, who don't cover our ears when we hear God's words of life to us in the Ten Commandments, who don't look away when we see Jesus shouting in the temple today. You wouldn't be here this morning if you didn't care about the whispers of God. You wouldn't be watching online you wouldn't be sitting in one of these pews after an entire calendar year, a year full of all kinds of shouting, 
if you were not being sustained and upheld every single day by God's voice, whether you are always aware of it or not. Keep listening for God's voice. Keep listening for his whispers. And don't turn away from his shouts. Because when you do, not only will God transform your life, but you will be a word. Our church will be a message that God is speaking to the world. Amen. Standing together, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people. In this season of Lent, let us pray to God who calls us to turn back and welcomes us with joy, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this congregation, for churches across the shoals, for people everywhere who are persecuted for their faith, and for all who walk with Jesus, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For peace in our world and for the welfare of your people, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are hungry, isolated, or cold, and for those who serve them, including Meals on Wheels and Colbert Caring Center, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are in need of comfort and hope, especially those whose names we pray together. Cole, Cole Reagan, Reagan Andrea, Andrea, Melissa, Sharon, Sharon Gerald, Billy, Billy Camille, Camille the Hoyle family, Russell, Linda, Linda, the Malone family, Glenda, Wanda, Kathy, Roy, Betsy, Faye, Rhoda, Susie, Claudia, and Donna. And for all who are known to us in the silence of our hearts, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For members of the armed forces whose names we pray together, Joshua, Joshua, Nathan, Nathan Ben, ben Michael, Michael, Keith, Keith Corey, Corey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Tim, Tim, Dominic, Nolan, Jean, Jean Eric, Austin, 
David, David Noah, Rush, Henry, Henry, Connor, Gage, John Philip, Dustin, and Jake. And for all whose work puts them in harm's way, especially in these years of illness and uncertainty, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We, for those who celebrate birthdays and anniversaries this week, especially Susan Balch, Sarah, Sarah Holland Kimbrell, and Henry Thomas Blank, that your blessing will be upon them all of their days, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those we love and see no longer, that they may rejoice forever in your loving presence, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who renews and restores all things. Hear our prayers and let each one find you mighty to save, forgiving us our sins out of your abundant grace, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. You have some pieces to make. Good morning again and welcome to Grace. I actually want to begin with, well, let my Beth get back to her seat. <laughs> I'll begin with two special um, welcomes today. Uh, the Larsons have family visiting with us today. Their two daughters are here, Sarah and Erin. So welcome and thank you for being with us today. Do we have other visitors today or are we the usual suspects? Other than that, I think that's right. And then um, when Lindsay uh, Owens first joined us as our communications intern, some of us got to get to know her, but a bunch of us didn't because we weren't fully back to in-person worship yet. So I'm gonna throw her off guard. And Lindsay, if you would come stand up here so everybody can wave to you. I think if you stand where I was standing, you'll be in the camera. <laughs> you have arranged for that. <laughs> so this is Lindsay and she is a senior at UNA and she is a public relations uh, uh, major, but she does a lot with communications and has been wonderful, wonderful to work with. And we're so blessed to have her and so grateful for what she does for us. So thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, thank you all for having me. Yay, welcome. One of the wonderful things that Lindsay has been doing for us is putting up a Lent word on uh, our Facebook page every day, Monday through Friday. It goes up at some point during the morning, and you can use that as a Lenten devotional. It's got a, a sort of a vocabulary of faith type word with a uh, verse from scripture and a question for reflection. So if you haven't checked those out, please check those out on our Facebook page. If you don't do Facebook, but you're interested in them, let us know and we'll be sure to get them to you some other way. Um, the other thing that we're doing for Lent words besides preaching, and by the way, if you uh, were paying attention to Anchor Lines a few weeks ago, you'll notice that I changed the Lent word for this Sunday. Episcopalians do not do sermon series well. So while an evangelical minister can decide six months out, here's what I'm preaching on, I apparently can't decide 
six days out what I'm preaching on. So I had a new Lent word for you today. But um, we're also doing Lent words in Sunday school. So Sandra Carpenter at 11 a.m. on Zoom is going to give us her Lent word for today, which is the word wisdom. And that um, comes from our New Testament reading. So you can join us for Sunday school and, and get the whole, the whole 360 degree picture of the scriptures today. Please check out Anchor Lines. Lynn has an article on the front page asking for people to volunteer to be readers, ushers, and acolytes, people of all ages, as young as Eloise up until whatever age you want to claim to be. So um, if you're interested in a ministry, please do contact her to sign up for that. This evening at 5 p.m., youth of all ages are invited to gather, and we're going to create a Stations of the Cross experience for the whole congregation um, for Good Friday. Coming up um, next Sunday is Time Change Sunday, so please be aware of that. I think the one that happens in the spring is the bad one. That's how I always remember it. Good one in the fall, bad one in the spring. Um, the following Saturday is March 20th, and that is a parish work day. So we are going to work on the grounds. We have been preparing that already with Rob Martin, who leads our community service team, as well as Goodloe Pride, our new junior warden, and Duran King, our sexton. So if you can join us for that day, um, please let Rob know. Uh, and then if you have any questions about it, Rob is here right after the service. We have new items for Colbert Caring Center. They're on the table right by the collection plate as you leave. And then finally, Holy Week begins on the 28th of this month, so that's not too far away. So please, again, be watching email and anchor lines and Facebook, and we will have all of the information you need up there. And within a week or two, we'll also be sending it to your home um, through the mail. I beseech you, sisters and brothers, by the mercy of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship.
please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Mary, the mother of our Lord, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. 
O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. For those in our congregation who will not receive the bread and the wine today, we offer together this prayer for spiritual communion found in your order of service. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep this, your family, Lord, with your never-failing mercy, that relying solely on the help of your heavenly grace, they may be upheld by your divine protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. and serve the Lord. Amen.